Informed still by a great fear of communist sprawl, the United States Air Force had been assisting the South Vietnamese Army since the early 1960s in an effort to stem the rise of communist guerrillas hoping to overthrow Saigon. Maneuvers like Operation Farmgate saw United States airmen serving on South Vietnamese aircraft in an advisory capacity, although in some reports, the U.S. Air Force ran the show. With the Gulf of Tonkin incident, where it was asserted that North Vietnamese Army PT boats had attacked the USS Maddox, the U.S. stepped up its military involvement on land, sea, and air. Operation Rolling Thunder was a program of sustained aerial bombardment that began in the year after the Maddox incident. The strategy behind Operation Rolling Thunder was to seemingly corner important targets by bombing nearby targets in an effort to weaken the NVA's infrastructure and strike a blow to the enemy's morale. Problems arose, however, when the targets, chosen mere hours before in Washington, seemed picked at random and without any apparent regard for the targeting of obvious, usual, and crucial wartime enemy targets. This, coupled with the fact that since this was the heart of the Cold War, the Air Force pilots had been training for nuclear strikes, not regular bombardment, led to seemingly inefficient and ineffective strikes. Such tactics saw that more bombs were dropped on the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong than were dropped in all of the European and Pacific theaters of World War II. In 1958, the United States Air Force and the Canadian Royal Air Force developed the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, an intricate system of satellite and aerial surveillance that would keep the leaders of either country apprised of any maritime or aerospace threat. Aerospace warning includes the monitoring of man-made objects in space and the detection, validation, and warning of attack against North America, whether by aircraft, missiles, or space vehicles, through mutual support arrangements with other commands. The three sectors of NORAD are Alaskan, Canadian, and the continental United States regions. Since 1966, the Cheyenne Mountain Nuclear Bunker has most famously served as a command post for NORAD and is a 5.1 acre tunneled compound built into the Cheyenne Mountain in order to withstand attack from all foreseeable weapons. In 1986, Libyan agents bombed a nightclub in West Berlin, killing three people and injuring over 200. U.S. President Ronald Reagan ordered a strike on Libya six days after the attack. The strike unloaded 60 tons of munitions on their targets, and while the United States received support from over 25 countries, including the United Kingdom and Canada, the United Nations officially voted to condemn the action. Libya retaliated by firing two Scud missiles at the United States Coast Guard station on the Italian island of Lampedusa, but the missiles overshot and landed harmlessly in the sea. On January 17, 1991, the United States, in coalition with over 20 other nations that opposed Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait, launched their first airstrikes in what came to be known as the Gulf War or Operation Desert Storm. Initial strikes of Tomahawk missiles, as well as F 11 7A Nighthawk stealth bombers, flew the initial missions over Iraq paving the way for F-14, F-15, F-16, and F-A-18 fighter bombers to gain air superiority over the country and then continue to drop TV and laser-guided bombs. The campaign lasted through the next month, dropping 88,500 tons of bombs in one of the first major conflicts that included 24-hour round-the-clock coverage by new media outlets. On February 24th through the 28th, 
1991, coalition forces were able to enter Kuwait and beat back the remaining Iraqi forces on the ground, effectively liberating the besieged country. Today, the U.S. Air Force has over 5,778 aircraft commissioned. The men and women of the Air National Guard work in tandem with the United States Air Force, not only providing the Air Force and United States military support in battle, such as in Vietnam, the Gulf War, Kosovo, and Operation Iraqi Freedom, but they also provide support and protection to the United States and its territories. In 2005, the Air Force militia mobilized 840 personnel in Florida, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas to aid victims of the Hurricane Katrina disaster. In addition, ANG search and rescue pararescue men and combat controllers saved over 1,300 victims of Katrina. Reservists average more than 360 missions away from home each month supporting other commands and Department of Defense requirements for important fighter, airlift, aerial refueling, rescue, and force projection assets. There was really no difference between Pearl Harbor and 9-11. In both cases, we let our guard down badly. Complacency will kill you. On September 11th, 2001, terrorists hijacked a number of commercial passenger planes and flew them into targets in New York City, the World Trade Center, and in Washington, D.C., the Pentagon. In the air, the civilian air patrol, the civilian auxiliary to the United States Air Force, flew aerial reconnaissance over Ground Zero in New York in an effort to provide rescue workers detailed analysis of the wreckage and assist in recovery efforts, including the transport and delivery of blood donations. According to military strategists Harlan K. Ullman and James P. Wade, shock and awe, or rapid dominance, is a military doctrine based on the use of overwhelming power, dominant battlefield awareness, dominant maneuvers, and spectacular displays of force to paralyze an adversary's perception of the battlefield and destroy its will to fight. This strategy, when used in battle, is to seize control of the environment and paralyze or so overload an adversary's perception and understanding of events that the enemy would be incapable of resistance at the tactical and strategic levels. The 2003 invasion of Iraq was an effort according to then President George W. Bush and British Prime Minister Tony Blair, to disarm Iraq of weapons of mass destruction, to end Saddam Hussein's support for terrorism, and to free the Iraqi people. As with the first Persian Gulf conflict, F-117 Nighthawks and air fighters such as the F-15E led the attacks, with bombings from the air clearing the way for a ground invasion of Iraq, eventually liberating the country of the rule of Saddam Hussein. Today, the brave men and women of the United States Air Force continue to strive for excellence as part of the largest and most technologically advanced Air Force in the world. From the cloth balloons of the Civil War to the unmanned aerial vehicles of today, such as the MQ-1 Predator or the MQ-8B Fire Scout, the mission of the United States Air Force remains the same, superiority in the skies. Will the continued development of the new drone aircraft eliminate needless casualties on the field of battle? Or will there always be a place in the sky for the most daring freedom fighter? What new threats might we face as technology advances? And what challenges will the Air Force have to meet and exceed? One thing is for certain. Our United States Air Force will continue to aim high, fly, fight, 
win.